was recording, and he was in there alone. He, wa he wasn't with, there weren't people in there. And, and this is a true story. And, and um, so he's in there alone, and he's recording. And they go to play the, the, the playback on the soundtrack. I don't know if you've ever been in a recording studio, but, but you do things in pieces in a recording studio. And uh, you'll lay down maybe um, the keyboards, and then you, and then it's in the computer. And the, oh, hi, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hey, I'm Pastor Bill. I, I'm gonna move back, and um, I'm like in your face here, aren't I? I'm Pastor Bill here at Thrive Worship Center. Is that thing centered, ma'am? Yep, Thrive Worship Center here in Vienna, West Virginia. Hallelujah! And uh, you've caught us. Right when we're going into our uh, time of message uh, for our Sunday morning service. If you ever want to visit us, we're right here in Vienna. West, it's not a very big place. You'll be able to find us. Just Google us if you want. Thrive Worship Center. But don't Google us to get here. Just find the address. Okay? Because if you Google us to get here, Siri will put you off behind a, a junior high school. Is that what you guys call them in West Virginia? Yeah, yeah. Junior high school. Middle school. Middle school. And you can't get through. The road doesn't come through. It, the, the Siri says it does, but trust me, it doesn't. Um, anyway, John, will you turn on light number two, please? Um, thank you. So welcome. I, I hope you'll stay with us. We're going to be talking about Mary, the mother of God today. We're going to be talking about Jesus as the son of God, um, how the scripture would recognize it rather than how we would recognize it. Um, and we're going to be talking about the peace that was then and the peace that is coming, right? Christmas is the time of peace, right? Um, or at least we want it to be. Um, I've noticed that uh, the folks are starting to stress out a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed it. You can always tell what's going on in the world by going to Walmart. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, isn't that true? And uh, you go to Walmart, and um, and you can you'll know right away how people are feeling. And, uh, and then you gotta make a decision whether you want to move to Antarctica <laughs> or or be nice. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Amen. But you know, around Christmas time. Yeah, it does get sort of hectic, and I get that. And, and uh, there's an old saying in the world of recovery, of which I've been involved in the recovery ministry world for a long time, many, many years. And, um, and uh, there's an old saying that if you spot it, you got it, right? You can always tell the person comes to you and tells you about yourself, and you say, well, friend, you, be, you need to look in the mirror. Amen. And, uh, yeah, and I used to get so stressed. I'd go into, I think God moved me to West Virginia from Southern California many years ago because uh, he wanted me to just be able to calm down. You know, California is so stressful. And if I, if I go back there now, I, I, have to, I have to ship an Indy 500 race car out there so I can keep up with people on the, the, they call them freeways, they're not interstates, they're freeways, and, and uh, I mean, it's crazy, there's like 12 lanes across, and they're doing 80 miles an hour both ways, and people are drafting you, you know, they're in the car behind you, they're running on, yeah, it's crazy, so anyway, let's talk about peace, shall we? Now, a few weeks ago, we talked about peace, but today I want to talk about Mary, and I, and I want to have some fun today, I want to embellish this a little bit. You know, I'm not reading my notes today. I, I just kind of want to do sort of a, um, a, a almost an allegorical approach to what we're about to read. So in Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1 and verse 26, go ahead and find your way over there. And, um, and this is the story about the birth of Jesus being foretold. Amen. And it says that in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, isn't there a, a folk song about Nazareth? And Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young do a song about Nazareth. I don't know. Anybody in here ever been to Nazareth? 
No, I've been close. I've been to uh, um, uh, Joshua Point or whatever in the desert in Southern California, about the same. Yeah, a little desert place. And uh, I don't know. I'm sure that it was pretty back then. You know, and the Sea of Galilee. But anyway, Mary's living in Nazareth. And Gabriel, there's only three angels named in the, in the uh, oh, actually there's four that are named in the Old Testament, right? You got Michael, the archangel. You got Gabriel. I think Gabriel's a lieutenant archangel. And then you got Lucifer. And we're going to meet somebody. We won't. We won't be here. But some people are going to meet this guy named Apollyon. Um, maybe sooner than we think. Um, I'm going to do some rabbit trails here because I was on Facebook this morning. I don't know if anybody's noticing that the Euphrates River is almost dried up. Yes. You know where the Euphrates River is? The Tigris and the Euphrates came out of the Garden of Eden or split the Garden of Eden or whatever. The, the Euphrates River, it is, it, is, it is written in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. You'll be able to read it that the great river dries up and it allows for the armies of the east, I wonder who that would be, to literally march right across the river, the barrier into, into the uh, Battle of Megiddo, uh, Armageddon. That's right. And, and these things are happening uh, in the world today. There's other things going, happening. I'm not going to tell you about it right now. But these angels had a major part to play in what was going on. Now, Gabriel had a really cool mission. He went to see Mary. And here's what happened. He says, and the ver it says here that, uh, uh, verse 27, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph. Now, Joseph was in the direct bloodline, the, the lineage, all the way back to Adam. And you say to me, well, Joseph wasn't married to Mary. Well, yes, he was, just not how we consider marriage, right? When in the, in the New Testament times, I'm sorry, the Old Testament times, and perhaps even today, I don't know, I haven't spoken to any Jewish people about this, but when you married somebody... In those days, in the time of Christ, you were married, but you didn't come together yet. Meaning that the 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 bride the, the bride would stay where she is. A deal would be struck between the two families, and there'd be money and stuff involved. She would stay, and then the bride, the the groom, would go home, back to his father's house, wherever that was, across town, down the street, wherever. And they would build a room on two. The father's house. This, you, are you picking up on some of the um, um, connection here with the, with the scripture? He go back, but but he, they weren't married yet. They were married, but they weren't married because they had to come together. And there would be a, a uh, he would come back and he'd get a, a bride and, and the bride's uh, maids and they would go have a big ceremony, a feast, seven days. It, it's just an amazing story. So Joseph was married to Mary. And his bloodline goes all the way back to Adam. You can read about it in the book of Matthew later on if you'd like to. And the virgin's name was Mary. Now Mary was, I don't know, people say she was 13, maybe 14 years old. Uh, and that's probably correct. Uh, back in the days, people didn't live as long. And, and, so, and the girls, the young ladies, as soon as they came of age, they're, they're ready to get married and, and have babies. Right? Build a family. And so it says here that the angel, Gabriel, it says in verse 28, he came to her and said, this is so, this is so cool. I, it, I don't know if she was asleep or, or in the kitchen. I don't know. But he came to her and he said, greetings. Don't you love that? When you meet somebody until Christmas, walk up, they come to you and say, Greetings. Right, that would be fun. And and he then he calls her O favored one. Okay, now what this meant was that Mary must have been a young teenage Jewish gal that was very in love with God. Mary probably followed the the law. Uh, she probably did her best to be uh, a, a, a virtuous, righteous woman. Uh, in the time of Christ 
and some people, oh, never mind, I'm not going to go there. Okay, and so he says, oh, favored one, and then he says, the Lord be with you. Now, that was a, what's called a double entendre. You ever heard of a double entendre? He was saying, bless you. Sometimes you say to somebody, bless you. He's saying, bless you, the Lord be with you. And he's also saying, guess what, Mary? The Lord is going to be with you. Amen. Uh, and it says that she was greatly troubled at the saying, and she tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. Mary is showing this tremendous humility. She's, she's like, no, 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 no. I, you know, please, first of all, uh, there's an angel talking to her. We don't know what the angel looked like. I suspect it was, it was in the, you know, the form of a man with a robe on and a, so forth and so on. But she's like, ah, oh, no, 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 please don't. You know, I, I'm just a, a, a gal doing the best I can. And she was, she was surprised by that. She's trying to discern it. And he says to her, the angel says, don't, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Have you? The, talk, listen to me on the camera for a minute. And of course, my friends here in the room. There's there's 500 people in here. You can't hear them. They're being real quiet. <laughs> okay, there's 30, 20, 25. Have you found favor with God? You ever wondered if God favors you? He loves you. He will never leave you. He wants to save you, right? I, I know that all of us in this room are Christians. <laughs> Listening by the camera, about, you may not be a Christian. You say to me, Bill, and, and a congregation, bear with me. I do this every week. Just give me two minutes, please. You know, the, the world is so confused about what a Christian is, particularly in America. I, I just, I'm amazed. Friends, a Christian isn't somebody that does really nice things for people and helps people and is, is uh, really nice to God. And all. No, that's not a Christian. The Bible says that we are saved by grace. For you are saved by grace through faith. It is a gift of God. That's right. You can't do anything to earn it or deserve it. It's a gift. Lest anyone should boast. Mary says, wait, what are you doing saying that I'm favored? Mary got it. She hadn't heard that verse yet. A Christian is someone who the Spirit of God indwells your heart. Physically, literally, that is a Christian. Okay? Uh, it, it, there, uh, there's all kinds of things I could say. I'm just going to say today, that's a Christian. And in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you how. If, if you've never asked the Spirit of God to enter into your heart. You can. And God wants you to. Because God favors you. If you're watching this by camera. And you're 25, 30, 40 years old. And you're still alive. You've been favored. You don't know how many times. Trouble could have come your way. Calamity could have come your way. And God stopped it. The angel stepped in front of the car. Just before it was going to turn into you, you were walking across. You don't, you have no idea. God favors you. And God favors the, the, the righteous and the unrighteous alike. He loves us. However, I believe that the righteous receive more uh, abundant and specific favor by Almighty God because He loves us. But the bad news is, is that we also receive more discipline. The righteous receive more discipline from God than the unrighteous because God wants us to improve. He wants us to grow. The Bible says he who has began a good work in you will complete it. So you may have a friend or a family member that is a Christian. You know for a fact that they they, they repented of their sin. They received the Holy Spirit. They, they said, thank you, Jesus. They, they, they got baptized. They began to walk with the Lord, but then they stopped. That person, the Lord is going to do what is necessary to bring them 
home than 100 sheep. You say to me, Pastor Bill, how do you know this? Because I was the leper. I was the leper for many years, for many, many years. Thank you for allowing me to do that quick commercial about what it means to be a born-again Christian. And the angel says with verse 32, he, uh, he says, verse 31, And behold, Mary, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And Mary is looking at this angel. If you could just put yourself in her place for a moment. And she says, I have never known a man. How can you be saying this? Y'all, did you ever think maybe the dialogue that went on was more than what is written in the scripture? I, I think it probably is. I do. Yeah. And Mary looks at the angel and she says, it's impossible. It's impossible. Do you have a friend or family member as we prepare for Christmas that says that's impossible? Friends, in two weeks, in 15 days or 14 days, you're going to sit down at a table or in a living room or whatever with people that would tell you that this is hogwash me. That's hogwash. Not true. Fallacious. Did you really believe that a 14-year-old girl got pregnant by an angel? It, that's going to happen. I, to every one of you, I guarantee it. If you have a big family gathering. <clears throat> and what will you say? What will you say? You know what Mary said? Are you sure? The angel says, yeah. Not only that, he said, but the, the baby inside of you, Mary, will be called great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Now, in your Bible, that word Son is most surely capitalized. Look at it and tell me if I'm wrong. That word S-O-N, the Son of the Most High. And the angel says, and the Lord will give. Circle that word, give. Or take note of it if you're on a cell phone. Give to him the throne of his father, David. Whoa! Whoa! Mary's head is swimming now. She's minding her own business. This angel comes into the room and says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Catholic version of that. The, the Lord is with thee. She's like, what? You're, you're going to conceive a baby. I, yeah, I've never even been. You, yeah, and then not only that, Mary, but there's more. He's going to be called great. The, 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 the son of the most high God and the Lord God is going to give him the throne of David. She's like, what in the world are you talking about? Oh, my God. Wow. In verse 33, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. <laughs> the angel is going from the, the Mary, you're pregnant, to the end of the world. She's like... Wow, and it says, he, the angel says, and Mary, and one more thing, dear, the kingdom there is going to have no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her and said, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. You remember what I said a few minutes ago? What does it mean to be born again? And I'm not saying that, that God is putting, if you're a lady listening, that God's putting Jesus in your womb. What I'm saying is that the, 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 the Holy Spirit comes upon us and it's as if Jesus who knocks on the door is, is literally you open the door and he comes in and he resides in your heart for eternity. The Bible says, if you love me, obey my commandments, my Father will be with you. I will be with you in your heart. We will have, we will sup with you. We will live with you. How favored are you, Christian? And, and do, you, do you feel favored? Or, or do you feel like, man, I can't wait for this season to get over. I hate Christmas. 
Yeah, people, I've heard people say that. You don't have to be in that job and cover your whole house with lights, although it is kind of pretty. If you go to Southern Cal Squirrel, if you go to Southern California, there's a house in Southern California in San Juan Capistrano, California. You probably could Google it. It's unbelievable. There's like a 50 bazillion lights on it and out in the front yard and everything. He, the guy rents a radio station and he plays the uh, this Christmas song with that electric light orchestra or whatever. You turn your radio on, you sit there and watch the house go crazy. Yeah. Are you favored? Do you, do you believe you are favored? Please, please do. Please, if you don't, take some time with me over here. Over here. I'll anoint you with oil in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll ask the Lord to fill you so full you can't even... Stand it. You'll be jumping for joy. It'll be unbelievable. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a moment for, for later on, perhaps. And, and, and the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High is going to overshadow you. Wow. Man, oh man, will this preach. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Amen. Now turn over, turn over in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Turn to the book of Isaiah. It's in the Old Testament. It's after Psalms and Proverbs. It's Isaiah. And then Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9. Can I get an amen? Go ahead and find Isaiah chapter 9. Amen. I've got to get some, some, uh, some liquid here. Amen. Now, Isaiah was born in like, I don't know, 780 B.C. or some time in there. And he lived until like 636 uh, B.C. I have trouble with that. It goes backwards. <laughs> Did you ever struggle with that? It's like daylight saving time. Spring forward, fall back, right? So, okay, so it's going backwards. Isaiah is, you know, in his... 50s, 60s, whatever. This is 800 years, 700 or something years before Jesus ever comes on the scene. And Isaiah is a prophet of God. Isaiah is, some believe, to be like the prince of prophets. And I, the book of Isaiah is the longest book in the Old Testament. Did you know that? There's like 65, 66 verses in it. And Isaiah is given these tremendous prophecies and visions by God. So you got the person sitting at the dinner table. They're cutting into the turkey. And they look at you and they say, you, you really believe this virgin birth thing? You say, well, yeah. Well, you know, what do you base that on? Well, let's see. 700 years before this alleged virgin birth thing happened in a little town called Nazareth, there was a guy named Isaiah. He was an Old Testament prophet, and he wrote some words down uh, uh, on a uh, on a scroll. They wrote on scrolls back at Papyrus or whatever. They wrote on. Um, they didn't have Parker pens. They, they just wrote on something very writable. And <laughs> didn't do my research on that. And he writes this down. And well, lo and behold. Through the years after the, the time of Christ and even before then, because the Bible had been uh, uh, completed, there was a 400-year period of time where there was silence and the Bible had been completed. And stick with me, I'm getting somewhere with this. And, uh, and, the, and they, they had all the scriptures and scrolls, right? And they, were, they protected them with, the, with their everything. I mean, they were sacred, the Jews. They, they love God, the scripture. Well, one day there's these boys and they're out throwing rocks uh, uh, in Palestine. And they're, they're seeing, let's hit that cave. Boom, they hit, clink. They go, what was that? And they run up there and they get into this cave and they find these large uh, uh, clay pots, clay clots. <laughs> clay pots, probably big ones. Now this happened. This is, yeah, you heard of them. It, it, you on the camera that you're incredulous, you're like, 
dude, just cut the turkey, would you? They, this happened. They're called the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I would encourage anyone who has any curiosity whatsoever to just look up the Dead Sea Scrolls and read them. You know, it just so happens that the most complete of all those scrolls, you can imagine these things are like, uh, who knows, 3,000 years old, whatever. They, they unroll them, they, they, they'd be brittle, but the most complete one was the book of Isaiah. And these people go through painstaking work to, to lay these out. You, can, you probably can go see the Dead Sea Scrolls somewhere. I don't know where they are. Anybody know where they are? New York, Chicago? Israel Il, uh, is in Jerusalem right now, and the Jordan Museum in Amman. Amen. Okay, so jump on a plane and head over to Jordan and become an imam. No, don't, don't <laughs> become an imam. <laughs> Okay, so they they read these and they put it all out, and then they it's now it's not what's called and stay with me I'm getting somewhere with this it's not called an extant document it's not the original there are no originals, okay, but what they do have the ability to do is they have the ability to look at all the other fragments and and scrolls and pieces of scripture that they have and they do something called textual criticism, they compare this sentence. This one. They, they compare this sentence. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And you'll notice in the Old Testament that word son is not capitalized. Mm -hmm. No clue. They'll match that against all of the uh, Bibles they have. And if there's a difference, they go, aha. If it's a significant difference, they'll, they go, whoops. <laughs> so and so made a mistake here. But now we have an older one. And so they will amend all of these. King James, NIV, ESV, blah, blah, blah. They'll amend that, that, let's say that one sentence, okay? Uh, I think there's 8,000 or something verses in the Bible, so this takes time. But they had almost all of the book of Isaiah. And when they match it against these other ones, by the way, in, in, in general, it's been recognized that there have been no, no significant changes or edits uh, by people in terms of the the the, the uh, inerrancy of the the essentials of Christianity. Did they find a word that said cow instead of horse? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. But the essentials of Christianity. This thing, this this scroll, the Dead Sea Scrolls, it matched all of it. Pass the uh, cranberry sauce, please. Person sitting across the table from me going, you you look like you think I'm not being honest. Look it up. Now, if that person looks it up, guess what they're going to do? What do you think they'll do, Kyle? It's one of two things. They might agree or they might disagree. They, it, they, they might get mad and say, I'm not believing this crap. Or... They might come to you and say, hey, Kyle, you know what? I looked that up. And it, well, you're, you're telling the truth. Uh-huh. Now you got an open door. Amen. By the way, don't get in a fight with the people at the dinner table on Christmas over whether or not the Dead Sea Scrolls are. Enjoy yourself. Or plant the seed. So what did Isaiah write? Isaiah writes... For this is this is Isaiah chapter nine, and verse six, and everybody has heard this. This is like the second or third most quoted verse in the entire Bible. What's the number one quoted verse in the entire Bible class? For God so loved. Yeah, there you go. Everybody knows. That's right. John three sixteen. Okay. You ever look behind the goalpost and it says Isaiah nine six? No. <laughs> but everybody knows it. How do we know? Music. For unto us a son is given, unto us 
A son is given unto. Okay, never mind. All right. So, that's a song. Okay. Isaiah writes this down 700 years before Jesus. For to us a child is born. What child? Hey, Mary. <laughs> You're going to have a baby. <laughs> he writes down, to us a son is given. What son? The son of the Most High God. And then he goes on and he says, And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And he writes, And of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Y'all, in my remaining couple of minutes, let me tell you what this means to you. And y'all watching by camera. You're going to be in a room soon with people. A few, several, I don't know. And the Lord is going to have a, a skeptic connect with you. You know, God, God can give people a little shove. God knows who is going to accept the gift of salvation and who isn't. He knows. Because he foreknew you, you were predestined. God knows. Don't get all wrapped around the axle about that, the Calvin Arminian. Don't do that. Just he knows. So he brings that person to you, and a conversation ensues. And you could say something as simple as, Do you believe that that Jesus was born and by Mary in the in the manger? And they say, Well, yeah, I, I get that. Did you know? So and so that it was prophesied 700 years before it happened. As a matter of fact, it was prophesied 4,000 years before it happened. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Genesis. And he, and there will be enmity between you and the woman. Satan. Ah, Satan. Listen to me. Uh, this is God talking. There's going to be enmity between you and the woman. And you will bruise her heel, but her offspring will crush your head. Now that's a victory. Did you know the Bible says that you have all authority over Satan in the name of Jesus Christ? You are called to crush scorpions and smash cockroaches and evil things in the name of Jesus Christ. Next time you're afraid, look up. Mm -hmm. Say, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will let me see that victory. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that 2,000 years ago, you crushed the head of Satan. Mm -hmm. Pastor Bill, Satan's still running around bugging people. He comes roaring and snoring and and fussing, and he's, and he's harassing me, and blah, blah, blah. Ah, hold on. The, 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 the doors of heaven were opened by Jesus when he died on the cross. That's when he crushed the head of Satan, and he's going to crush his head another time. That's for later. So finally, I close with this. Mary was foretold she said, you're going to have a child named Jesus. But seven years, 700 years before that, it was written right here. And not only did Isaiah say that she was going to have a, a son, it was the son of God. The son of God, friends, if, oh, the son of God thing just, it just, it excites me so much. Do you know that the DNA of God was in Mary's belly? Who's, who, there was nobody else's DNA. It takes an egg and a seed. Can I get a man? 
<laughs> Doesn't it? Whose DNA was in the belly of Mary? God's. The Son of God. That's why they call Jesus, the, as we call him, the Son of God. And the Bible says that for God so loved the world. No, no. The Bible says, yeah, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Meaning he was special, he was unique. Jesus was the Son of God. He is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have human DNA. But he was a man because he was born of a virgin. Jesus had everything. We could, fingernails, veins running through, you know, everything. Hair, no eyebrows. No, he had eyebrows. <laughs> That's a joke. I don't have any eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Jesus was God put into the belly of Mary. Isaiah prophesied. There's no way to debate this point, friends. You can't do it. It, it can't be debated. Now you can ignore it if you want. As I heard the evangelist say more than once, friends, you can walk out of here not believing in Jesus, but it's not because you haven't heard the truth. You can ignore it. And I don't know what in here fits that, but listen to me on the camera. You can ignore it if you want, but it still happens. Truth is truth. Have a look at that story of, of Mary and Gabriel again in the book of Luke. And go to Isaiah chapter 9 after we, we say good day and God bless you. Read it for yourself. Be blessed for yourself. Amen. Are you favored by God? I believe you are. Kyle, could you get the um, tape player, please? I'm going to ask Chip to come and say a benediction over us. We have, we have um, um, decided that Chip, Chip needs to be the minister of prayer here at Thrive Worship Center. He, his, his prayers are beautiful. Uh, I just love them. Will you come, sir, and, and, and just say a benediction over us as we... As we uh, close our service, God bless you.